Hi, welcome back. I hope you're all safe and well. Last time um, I put something up on Sophocles' Oedipus the King, we talked about miasma and pollution, but we also saw lots of examples of irony. So today's video is going to be all about tragic irony in Sophocles' Oedipus the King. What is irony and what does it actually add? There's a big misconception about irony. Um, because of like American and Canadian takes on what irony really means. Um, the whole Alanis Morissette song, isn't it ironic, lists lots of things that aren't technically, technically ironic. And it's one of the ways the word has changed. It's like 10,000 spoons when all you need is a knife. No. And isn't it ironic? Don't you think? That's not ironic. And no smoking sign on your cigarette break. No. No. A traffic jam when you're already late. No. A little too ironic. And yeah, I really do. What is ironic, technically, when we're thinking about tragedy in theatre, is um, a character behaving and talking about things that touch on a circumstance they don't know anything about. So it's the audience or other characters having an awareness of something that a certain character does not. And Sophocles is really, really heavy handed with this in Oedipus the King. So the main scene we're gonna focus on today to look at irony is the scene between Oedipus and Tiresias and the scene where Jocasta comes in as well. So this puts us at line 281 of Oedipus the King. We've seen the premise and the preamble where we have a who done it and Oedipus wants to find out who killed King Laius. He has absolutely no idea that King Laius was A, his father, and B, the man he killed on his way to Thebes. Nor does Oedipus have any clue that his wife Jocasta is his mom. Okay, so he's completely ignorant. And you would think at line 281, when he has the benefit of someone like Tiresias, he would actually flip and listen to him. So if you've not met Tiresias before, Tiresias is a blind prophet character. He's a kind of mystic figure. And actually, whenever Tiresias says something in tragedy, certainly in Oedipus the King, it does come true. He's a believable prophet. Whereas Cassandra, for example, the free female prophetess, is doomed by Apollo to never be believed. That's not the case for Tiresias. He's often pretty reliable, to be honest. And here we see Oedipus asking Tiresias about what's going on in Thebes. Why is there this plague? Who killed King Laius? <clears throat> Um, and at first, Tiresias is really, really reluctant to, to tell Oedipus anything because he knows that Oedipus isn't really ready to hear this. And he says, look, send me home. You'll bear your part most easily and I will mind if you just take my advice. So just leave me out of it. I don't want to tell you. And Oedipus picks and picks and picks and picks at Tiresias. Um, and Tiresias says, I'll vex neither myself nor you. Why probe these things in vain? You won't find out from me. And this is when Oedipus gets really frustrated with Tiresias and he starts to call him a traitor. Um, he says, you'll never speak out. Just stay stubborn and avoid the point. So Tiresias says, you know, watch your temper. You're not ready to hear this information. And then eventually, after probing and probing and probing, Tiresias finally starts to touch on the truth and this brings you to line 350. Um, I insist that you abide by your own proclamation and from this day speak neither to these men here nor to me for you are the unholy polluter of this land. So Tiresias confronts Oedipus and says you are the person that killed Laius and Oedipus is having absolutely none of it. So shameless to stir up a tale like that. Where can you run to? Where find an escape? I have escaped. The truth within me is my strength. Who taught this truth to you, not your art? Okay? So Tiresias actually tells Oedipus point blank, and remember this is only line 360, really early on in the tragedy. You are the killer that you are looking for and Oedipus starts to threaten him. Now what you notice if you're reading along with this section is that the pace is really picked up. Between line 355 and 370, we get single line exchanges and these are called stichomythia. Stichomythia are single line alterations. 
They can sometimes depict an argument, which is what we're seeing here. They can be used actually sometimes when characters are plotting together, but it's a useful device to have in mind if you're ever taking an exam or doing a close reading analysis of Greek tragedy. So the pace is really picked up here. And what's even worse is that Oedipus starts to taunt Tiresias for his blindness. He says, you could never understand because you are blind. So at line 370, for you it fails because you are blind in ears and mind and eyes. And Tiresias says, what a sad case you are, taunting me as all these here will soon be taunting you. Oedipus, wrapped as you are in endless dark, you can't hurt me or anyone who sees the light. So for those of you who know the ending of Oedipus the King, we know that Oedipus is going to blind himself. Spoiler alert, <laughs> it's the most famous part of Oedipus the King. And this is why there's a particular irony here, because actually Tiresias knows that as well. Not only does Oedipus undermine Tiresias' knowledge of the past, but he doesn't appreciate Tiresias' knowledge of the future. Tiresias knows what will happen for Oedipus in the end as a result of his ignorance, his willful, willful ignorance. Um, and so we have a real clash um, between Oedipus and Tiresias here. Okay, it's worth looking at just for the um, references to blindness that keep coming up again and again. And Sophocles is really priming us for that really climactic ending. Okay. If we move ahead, you'll start to be quite shocked at just how many times before the final recognition, Oedipus is actually told really key clues or told point blank that he killed Laius. Okay. On line 530, Oedipus decides that Creon has put Tiresias up to making these lies up about him, which aren't lies. Um, and there's a whole argument again between Oedipus and Creon that runs from like 555 to 580. And again, we see the stick of myth here. Oedipus is taking everybody on. But what's really interesting is when Jocasta comes forward, okay? And this puts us at line sort of 680 onwards. Um, Jocasta makes a speech about what has happened. So Oedipus says, he says that I am the one who has murdered Laius. Jocasta, does he know this himself or from another? Oedipus, he's had a prophet to do the dirty work, to guard himself and keep his own lips clean. And Jocasta says, in that case, you can call yourself acquitted. Listen to me and know no mortal man has any share in arts of prophecy. I'll prove it to you and at no great length. An oracle came to Laius once. I won't say from Phoebus himself, but from his underlings, that his fate was to be killed by his own child, the son that would be born to him and me. Now, as for Laius, the rumour is that strangers, bandits, killed him one day where three roads meet. As for the child, not three days past his birth, Laius bound his feet together and had him thrown out onto a pathless mountainside. And so Apollo didn't cause the child to be his father's killer or make Laius meet the fate he feared at the child's hand. Such were the prophecies all laid down clearly. None need trouble you, for what a god desires he'll easily reveal to us. Now, Jocasta has let go of so many clues in that passage. Also, in case you've missed it, Oedipus's name means an injured foot, <laughs> okay? Pus, like pedestrian, podes. But that's where we get octopus from, okay? Eight feet. So Oedipus is called basically Gammy Foot. And he's missed this detail that Laius bound his feet together and had him thrown out onto a pathless mountainside. So the actual naming of Oedipus adds to the irony of his scene. But Oedipus misses all the details, he misses all the clues that Jocasta puts forward because he says, My wife, when you spoke just now, my spirit wandered my mind was in turmoil, okay? So here we see that he's just not listening to her. And again, we have the irony of Oedipus calling Jocasta my wife. He doesn't call her Jocasta. He calls the Thebans children. He calls his wife my wife. So that kind of language of incest is really threaded through the tragedy as well. 
Okay, so hopefully that was helpful for you and we can see that actually the irony is not always especially subtle in Sophocles, Oedipus the King. But many, many clues are revealed to Oedipus before he actually realises who done it. Okay, so look out for these as you read him. I hope that was helpful. Um, and there's more to come in the Oedipus the King series. So don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the notification bell for the future videos that are coming up. Okay, stay safe. Thanks.